Hi, I'm Saloni Krishnan and this is my postdoctoral project. I'm studying how musical experience shapes the brains of beatboxers um, and guitarists when they're listening to music. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Shanae Chen and I'm a PhD student in a lab and I'm just helping with the project. The irony of having a brain scan in an MRI machine is that it takes a certain amount of mind control to allow yourself to be confined in a small space for over an hour. But this is exactly what I did for the sake of science and of beatboxing. Just off Russell Square in London, in the labyrinthine basement of Birkbeck UCL Centre for Neuroimaging, a team of research scientists are probing the brains of beatboxers. Their mission is to discover if musical experience alters brain response when listening. In other words, does the brain of a beatboxer care more when listening to beatboxing as opposed to guitar music? To find out, brain scientist Dr Saloni Krishnan has been analysing the brain waves of beatboxers and guitarists, comparing them to each other and to a control group. Beatboxers and guitarists were chosen for the research because their skills require a high level of dexterity. And so, after a rigorous set of checks and rechecks, it's my turn to enter the MRI scanner, while Saloni and Sinead Chen, her postgrad research assistant, look inside my head. The first thing you notice when you enter the lab is the sound of the superconducting helium pump. Its rhythm almost sounds organic and human. Then it's on with the in-ear headphones, padded head clamps and strict instructions to stay absolutely still. The test included listening to short excerpts of recordings specifically made for the project by superstar beatboxer Reap Swan, as well as a selection of guitar riffs and sound effects. It's just about impossible to work out how much time passed while I was in the scanner, but three of the tests were about 20 minutes long, then there were a few sessions that lasted five minutes or so. At first I felt a little claustrophobic, and you have to will yourself not to scratch every surfacing itch. The MRI made a series of rapid, dull thuds, a bit like between each audio recording, and during one experiment it made a continuous oscillation that caused me to hear all sorts of beating and psychoacoustic overtones in my mind. To be honest, it was all a bit psychedelic. At other times, as I listened to a range of sound effects such as cans opening and people munching crisps, I had to will myself awake as my mind wanted to drift into sleep. All very odd. When the hour was finally up, I was pleased to be released. Apparently some candidates actually enjoy the experience. For me, I neither enjoyed it nor disliked it. It was an experience. I felt quite dizzy for the following 10 minutes, and then I was led to a soundproof studio to be subjected to a series of psychometric, psychoacoustic and musical tests at the hands of Sinead. These included a hearing test, pitch test, rhythm test and other computer-based visual and auditory tests. Saloni has nearly finished her research. It's too early to release any results and after me she still had one more beatboxer to go. As I left the lab I met Oxbox on his way in. How was it? he asked. Psychedelic, I replied. After four hours in the lab I rode the lift up to street level to fresh air and sunshine, happy that I'd made my small contribution to the science of beatboxing. And I can't wait for the results. You can read my interview with Dr Saloni Krishnan on humanbeatbox.com. Peace. Tight out. <laughs>